And welcome to the M2 Podcast. This is the show where we cover esports and personalities, gaming industry related news, new and upcoming games, and technology innovation. I'm your host, Michael Anthony. My co host is uh, Kyle Heath. And what we like to do here is do a week in review of everything gaming industry related news. So without further ado, Kyle, like, what have you been up to this week? This week, you already yes, know sir. I played Back for Blood. You already know it happened. Again? Continuation. Dude, we still have so much of that game left. It's so funny. There was actually something that happened, though, when we were playing. <clears throat> so we're in, like, the, uh, we're in the second act, right? Like, halfway through okay. the second act on our first kind of playthrough through that. And then we, like, we got off. We had a pretty good session. But, like, it felt pretty easy. We were, like, this is, like, oddly easy. I don't know. Like, I feel like we need to play, like, like a higher difficulty because this is just way too easy. And we thought we were on second difficulty, so, like, veteran, but it's, like, normal. Um, yeah. So we thought we were playing on that. We're like, dude, this is so easy. We should, like, amp it up next time. <laughs> and so we, like, get back into the session, but we realize we can't play the second act in the higher difficulty because you have to, like, you have to do it in sequence. So if you're, you have to kind of commit to a difficulty at the start and then yeah, you can and carry stay it out. the whole way through. Yeah. So we're like, well, that's a bummer. Like, I don't know why we can't do that. But then, like, when we joined up, we noticed that, like, the banner for the level, it was blue, indicating it was on recruit. And we're like, wait a minute, what? So, like, we get in and jump, and we're like, wait, can you, like, do, because, like, on recruit, you can't do damage to teammates. So we're like, wait, like, shoot me real quick. Like, and then, like, I, I got shot, and my buddy was like, wait, I'm not doing damage. And, like, I shot him. We didn't do damage. I'm like, dude, no shot. We just played. This started, like, got halfway through Act 2, and we realized we had it on recruit. So I'm like, oh man, that was frustrating. But then um, we were able to load it up on on veteran, and it's actually like a good difficulty now. <laughs> so it's nice. like the whole time it was like <laughs> just playing on easy mode, didn't realize it. But um, That's but so yeah, funny. so we we caught up pretty quick to where we like were though. So it didn't take too long to like get back to where we were. But it was nice to play on like a good difficulty. But yeah, yeah so were you guys going down more often too? So like when you get hit, your shields drop or like your health drops, and you fall down, you can be picked up literally right yeah yeah you only get a certain amount of reses to like a, oh. a level but um but yeah i think like one or two of us got knocked at least once like <laughs> we were playing it so definitely definitely a lot more difficult health was uh health was there There was a couple times where like we were all like struggling like we had no health no heals and so we're just like trying to go through the level as like carefully as possible and um but those it it, it like came out to like be some pretty like fun moments though overall so um yeah it was uh i think so far it's one of the things i can't wait to play again because it's like it's pretty fun and like we like like i don't know maybe it was since last time but we like we started messing around with cards a little bit more and so now like the card system is in that game is like so kind of in depth and it's 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 crazy because for the longest time we weren't really utilizing cards and it was like really hard because like we just didn't have any good builds. But then once we started like figuring out the card system and like actually like building out these decks and like taking them into like matches and stuff, you realize like how how like insanely good these cards are to have. Yeah. Because like there's some that just give you these insane abilities, and there, there's some that are team cards that help out the entire team. And like whether it's like money or shields or whatnot. So there's a lot of like choice there, and um, and yeah, it it made the uh. I remember when we we discovered cards about like maybe three fourths of the way through the first act, and like we were struggling towards the middle of that act because it was getting really hard. But then when we built those decks, it was like it was just easy mode for the rest of that act. <laughs> and so like we were just like annihilating. And so we were like, yeah, this is it. And like we have like, and you can build decks like you can build decks or whatever. But we were building based around we were trying to build to complement each other, which is like the way you really have to do it, especially yeah. like later on. And so like someone was. We have like one person building straight like damage and just like they're like kind of the slayer role. And then we have like I'm playing more of the support role and trying to get like cards that like garner us more health for hordes and like, you know, can get people up quick. And then I think my buddy's doing like he's doing some sort of like build with like, speed and stuff like that. So he's just like this agile build. Um but yeah, so we're all kind of but we all have kind of complementary cards to each other. So like it's it's like we figured that out pretty quick. So it's been a lot of fun, but yeah, um, it's been crazy too. I mean, since we replayed through some of Act Two, it was like a lot of um, a lot of things change since we like restarted it. Like, there's actually there's actually some pretty like crazy differences between the first time we played through it and the second. 
there's like differences in weather and like you know what spawns and i know the second time we played it i think we had a uh it was like nighttime and we had a boss spawn like right at the start of one of the levels which didn't happen before so it was like it completely caught us off guard yeah it was it's a lot of fun so they really had the replayability <laughs> kind of there i've noticed um yeah that's what yeah. it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun yeah I... yeah it is yeah, I got to play that a couple of times with one of my buddies, and we got, like, kind of into the card system. And I just played, like, random games of... It's kind of like matchmaking, right? Have you tried that yet? Yeah. My, Where just, my, like, it'll just throw you in randomly. Yeah, to, my like, buddies tried that. They did, like, a quick match or whatever, um, but I didn't try it. Yeah, it's not, it's not bad. You can kind of just choose your difficulty. It throws you in a random group, and whatever, like, wherever they are in their progress is where you end up. Yeah, like hmm. with them, so yeah, you can like join in when it's like Act Three, <laughs> <laughs> like, like completely yeah. out of context and like no cards whatsoever. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's... Yeah, they actually had an October update. Like they had like a pretty decent sized patch this past week too. And so oh, nice. I know one of the things, one of the things I thought was kind of weird. Like when we played through it, like I figured this is just part of the game design, but they don't tell you when a horde's happening, and like they don't tell you how long the horde is. So, like, when it happens, there's, like, a sound cue that kind of, like, you just yeah. hear a bunch of screaming. It's like, okay, a horde started. And so, like, you know, to like, you're going to be fighting a lot of enemies. But, like, you didn't really, like, you kind of knew when it ended, but it took you a second to, like, register. Like, oh, wait, okay, we can just continue going now. We don't have to worry about this. Yeah. But, um, but it was odd because, like, you just didn't know. And actually, with this recent update, they added, like, a, a indicator in the HUD. So now you know, like, oh. when a horde starts and what kind of horde it is and how long it's going to take. So it's really oh, nice to nice. have that information now. But yeah, it was really funny. It was like they didn't have that, but like something that I was thinking of like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of nice to have like some way to know. Sure enough, they did with yeah. this update. So it's pretty nice. There, There's like one section in the game, uh, if I remember correctly, it's like a horde happens, but you can't defeat the horde. You have to like run through the horde to finish the level. Like you yeah. have to get to the safe house. Right. But you like it doesn't really tell you to do that. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like the previous yeah. game, like Left 4 Dead, you just keep killing everything until the horde dies. Right, yeah. And then you're just good. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd... that was like infuriating trying to run up a hill and you <laughs> yeah. can't get through and your teammates are all dying. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that happened at least once where we were like fighting a bunch and they were just like, we just need, like, we realized eventually, like, we just got to leave. Like, there's a safe room. Like, we just need to get out. We yeah. can't, like, fight this. So, yeah. And you're like burning through ammo. Oh, good times. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying that game. Um, in terms of anything else, I wanted to play more. Uh, I think we played a little bit of Saints Row, like my buddy and I. I it's made a been tweet. A while I made I made a tweet about it. about it. Yeah, this past week I made a tweet about it because it was really frustrating. But um, when we were <laughs> we were playing Saints Row, we played an hour and a half. We didn't complete a mission. Like we tried. Like we played one mission, and um, my buddy for some reason, like the server kept crashing my like buddy out of the game and so like he would get like an internal a, a quote internal error and then it would just boot him out of the mission and so we couldn't finish it this happened twice and so i eventually finished the mission alone and then like he joined up we're like all right well, let's try and do like i don't got much more time but let's just try and do like another mission and so he like joins up again we do this like side mission not related to the main story or anything and we just started the side mission and then halfway through he gets the same error and we're just like what, what is going on like it was happening on two server missions the only the only thing I can think that happened was that we were it was like some server related. They just couldn't like tell us, obviously, like explicitly. Yeah, that's the only explanation that makes sense to me. Um, but yeah, very odd. It happened on two different missions, but it was on the same server. So um, I think if that ever happens again, that's the only thing I can think to try and fix it is get a new server. <laughs> so just like quit the build and boot it back up. But yeah, just rebuild completely. That's some old school mm. like Xbox 360 crap. <laughs> like for real. <laughs> It's yeah, it was it was really odd. That's the first time I think we've had like a serious issue of that that was actually like hindering progression like multiple times, not just like a one a one off thing where just typically after if like we would leave or like he would leave or we'd restart the mission, we'd we'd like get it on the second try and we wouldn't have issues, but this was like actually continuous, which is odd. But yeah. I made a tweet about yeah. it. I I didn't at Saints Row. But I, I did make a tweet uh, with frustration. <laughs> and then at the end, I was like, I mean, we're still going to finish the game. But like, I mean, like, what are we doing yeah. here? We've had like, the, since the game came out, August 23rd, it's October 13th at the time recording this. And they have only done two hotfixes and no like major patch yet. 
And so it's just like, dude, come on. And they, but their Twitter, I, I looked on their Twitter, looked at replies. There's people asking the same thing. Like, when are we getting a patch? And they said they are working on one. And it's going to be soon. So I, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> How long it's going to be. Yeah. We have no idea when it's coming, but apparently they have a major release soon. So we'll see if I, I'm, I'm hoping that fixes a lot of these issues. Cause like, I mean, at the very, like if we crash out of the game, I kind of wish it was a little more detailed, but I also get from a dev perspective why they don't want to give out too much detail. Cause it's just like, you know, it's probably something embarrassing that they don't want to show people. But yeah, it's, yeah. I don't know. I wish I had just had more info, at least as, you know, from my perspective. Yeah, Saints Row seems very frustrating. I just hate how, like, more and more games keep coming out that aren't finished. It just, like, I'm so over it. Yeah. Just release a finished product, man. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know. It's frustrating. I've thought multiple times about coming out of YouTube retirement, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Start we'll see. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, oh, I have, an, I have so many I enjoy ideas. Those reviews, I have man. so many I, ideas. So. I enjoy, I enjoy your, like, your reviews. Yeah. You need to go back. Yeah. At least have there's, like side projects and stuff. Yeah, I mean there's part of that format I liked. If I were to yeah. like start that back up again, obviously like I would take a maybe a slightly different direction, but but yeah, I I my wheels have been turning the past couple weeks, let's just say that. <laughs> so that's uh, good. Um, I've been doing the same. You write anything down? Um it, like honestly, like most of it like most of the stuff has just been like stuff I've been thinking up. But like as these mm -hmm. like bugs happen, because like what I've been doing is I've been recording all of the gameplay and I'm going to continue. Oh, I'm going awesome. to record the whole playthrough <laughs> and just like any bugs or anything I run into, I'll have that footage and you already know I'm going Make a ham. Montage. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Make a montage. Footage, yeah. I'm prepping for it in case, I, uh, in case I do it, but yeah. Pretty cool stuff. I mean, those, those are the only two games I think I played. Played like a little bit of Fortnite. I think it was last night. It just, you know, hopping on the game for because why not? There's like goo now. I, I don't understand. Like half the game I just don't get at this point, but... <laughs> You know, it's just okay. mindless fun, I think. Yeah, and now every time we play, I get stacked up against crazy elo, so it's like, oh, you're I screwed. get like, yeah, yeah, I get these games. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It's like, do I be that guy in Smurf? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's got to that point where I feel like that's probably the only way to have fun of that game. Very nice. Yeah, for me, I like, I haven't done anything this past week video game related. I went on vacation. Was up in the Rockies, as people in the video can see the merch. <laughs> Went to the national park. That was pretty cool. Up in uh, Denver, Colorado. Split around Colorado Springs. Went to Red Rock. Saw Young the Giant. But I got to admit, I was spending a lot of my time thinking about how I wanted to play Overwatch when I got back. So there you go. Yeah, that's gonna happen at some point. But I, I ain't got no gaming stories, man. I'm like so out of the loop right now. I and it's do. like. Like completely unplugged and disconnected. Like you barely heard from me. Yeah, for real. That. Most people probably didn't, but that, that's the way it should be. When you're on vacation, you know, spending yeah, just, spending time with the with the ones you got, and then you know all the right. Yeah, you can get back to the guys digitally. You know. <laughs> yeah. Shoot you guys a message later. But this is a gaming show, and sure not only that, but it's a a news show. So double right. You gotta, you got you gotta like fill me in. I've been out of, I've been out of the loop all week. <laughs> yeah. So what were you able to find? What what happened? Uh, I wish I so some of the story. Like I wish it was heavy hitter, heavier hitting stories. Admittedly, this week's a little kind of slow. We're making the most of it though. Um, starting off with a very. This isn't necessarily like break like crazy news or anything. It's kind of just like an interesting piece I found. Um, but CNN actually ran it. And um, they, <laughs> so apparently, um, <laughs> it was like two students. Oh, it was like two. I think it was like a two like grad students. Um, they they got brain cells in a dish to play the video game Pong. Kind of crazy, right? Like he's just like brain cells doing this. Does that even happen? <laughs> That's know? a good question. You know. Um, yeah. So I'll read like the top line of the article. It says, "All right, so the video game Pong is such a simple concept. Anyone can play. Even a dish of brain cells, according to scientists." Researchers connected the neurons, the cells responsible for receiving sensory input from the external world and for sending motor commands to muscles of humans and mice to a computer where neurons were made aware if their paddle was making contact with the ball. Using electric probes, scientists monitored the activity and responses of the neurons and plotted the results as spikes on a grid, with the spikes getting stronger the more a neuron moved a paddle and hit the ball. And then there's like this, they have like this interesting image um so it's, it's scanning electron microscope 
images of the neural culture that has been growing for more than six months. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at. It looks like a bunch of hair and germs, if I'm being <laughs> honest. But this is apparently the, uh, the neural culture that's been growing and competing in Pong. Um, and so, the, yeah, there, I mean, the article goes on a little bit more. Um, it says that scientists use software to analyze instances with the neurons missed. In a paper published Wednesday in the journal Neuron, researchers claim they were able to demonstrate the neurons could adapt, act could adapt activity to a changing environment in a goal-oriented way in real time. It says from worms to flies to humans, neurons are the starting block for generalized intelligence. First author Brett Hagen, a chief scientific officer at um, Cortical Labs in Melbourne, Australia, said in a statement, so the question was, can we interact with neurons in a way to harness the inherent intelligence? <laughs> so it's like this, <laughs> bro, this stuff is like, like just like it brain is like five times the size of the average human. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like just like who thinks of this? It's so crazy. Yeah, this is nuts. This is like, and I love how. You see the related article too, the Neuralink. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just kind of crazy, man. Yeah, it's, what does it's, this mean? It's so insane. Like, yeah, it's like because like, you see this and it's like, okay, cool, but like, what do, what do us as humans do with information like this? Like, we see like just these little like, you, you just see these little like, the like, brain cells <laughs> just like playing pong. Um, I, I think it just kind of shows that like the cells are very uh adaptive i guess yeah like can adapt to the environment it's like it's like this i guess if they do this like could they become sentient could they like could they took over the yeah. world dude like it's like skynet becoming self-aware yeah dude it's just or cortana from halo cortana from halo is a uh, an ai with like spliced in human brain <laughs> cells yeah like, dude um yeah i mean this is so crazy Towards the end of the article, they say, you know, this isn't the first time researchers have used Pong when studying brain capabilities. Last year, Neuralink, uh, the implant company owned by SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk, released a video in which a monkey appears to play Pong using only its mind. Uh, the nine-year-old male... <laughs> the the nine-year-old male... I don't even know, is that a breed? I don't, I don't, what am I Maka Q? Yeah, I don't Maka even, Q? Maka Q, I mean, uh, named I Pager. Think, uh... Uh, his, his name was Pager. He had the Neuralink device implanted in both sides of his brain, according to the YouTube video posted on the company. Uh, Neuralink is developing Bluetooth-enabled implanted chips and can communicate with the computers via a small receiver and has previously demonstrated the technology in pigs. I'm sure you've probably heard of Neuralink at this point if you're at all plugged into the tech world. Um, but yeah, the, the things we're doing with the human mind is unlike anything we've seen before. And uh, I, it's crazy because, like, who knows what they would do, like, with this information of making brain cells do this, I feel like it's kind of just like this is a grad paper. <laughs> then they had to pick a topic, and so like, why don't we make brain cells just play pong? Dude? Like, I don't know what else to do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, well, I mean, like, if you can make it do pong, what else could you do? Yeah, oh, it's I mean, a it's a macaque, by the way. Ah, interesting. Yeah, never heard of that. But yeah, um, I don't know, dude. It's crazy. Um, it's so I. I should I shouldn't go too far ahead because I know we're like we're kind of guessing. Um, there was, um, it said so the team that developed this chose Pong due to its simplicity and familiarity, um, adding that it was one of the first games used in machine learning. Um, his team is now testing other games, but he said, but the researcher said in the short term the technology could be used for quote better drug discovery, disease modeling, and understanding how intelligence arises, which in turn could be used to develop new algorithms for machine learning. It all comes back to that network, the neural network, baby. Yeah. Um, I, I like the aspect of, like, determining um, new diseases and stuff, right? Because it's, like, brain disease, right? So it's, like, you should be able to tell the difference between healthy and, like, not healthy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for real. Like, I think it's just the point, you know, this technology could, you know... Because I think eventually, like, if you figure it out, like, how to target cells and stuff like that, it could, like, you know help towards like curing cancer and like these crazy you know um things we never thought would be possible so maybe it's a step in that oh, yeah. direction i mean who knows um yeah very funny though that like that they video like it's, it's yeah it's so interesting that they use a video game right and that's like that's like the basis for what could be something insane like in the coming decades 
That's no. true. I'm at, imagine if it could do like chess, like high level chess, <laughs> like it was a master chess. Yeah, it's like a grandmaster. You're like fighting yeah. brain cells. Crazy. Um, no shot. Yeah, dude, this is just it's wild. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully, it's technology that they can you know, figure it out and use it for good. Could be a lot of interesting stuff to. I mean, dude, the, the next like, because like, we've hit a like, there's been a technological like revolution just over the past like we've grown so much technologically over the past like 20 30 years oh gosh yes it's like less than that even yeah it's been like so crazy right and like i mean even you know the smartphone over the past 15 years (laughs) that's like when it's really like grown but but yeah like but i don't know stuff like this this is like probably the next step in like of like technological advancement it's crazy dude next uh next decade will be interesting um yeah yeah, we'll see what happens. That that comes down to like a like governmental regulation kind of thing as yeah, well. Exactly. You just never know. It'll... Um yeah, anyways, brain cells playing video games. Your brain cells are going to be going nuts when you play the new MetaQuest Pro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be going bonkers, dude. <laughs> Insane. What a segue. Stop Stop tier. Later. So, the Meta, <laughs> the MetaQuest Pro was announced, cost $1500 and it uh it ships on October 25th. <laughs> um, it's something that, it's been removed for a long time. Um, you know, it's been yeah. kind of talked about for a while. But yeah, it f- officially got announced. Um, it's a $1,500 virtual reality headset. It says it's been teasing for the past year. Uh, Quest Pro is a new branch of the Quest VR headset lineup featuring a new processor and screen, a dramatically redesigned body and controllers, inward facing cameras for eye and face tracking, and a color video feed for mixed reality apps. Pre-orders open today, which today was October 11th, so when pre-orders went up, uh, it opened to 22 countries. Devices will ship on October 25th. Um, it says the Quest Pro will sit alongside the $400 Quest 2, uh, with Meta, which Meta will continue selling as well. Uh, but where the Quest 2 user base favors fitness, games, and other entertainment, the Quest Pro is aimed at businesses and professionals who can afford its higher price tag. You know. Um, Mark Zuckerberg was on the uh, Rogan, like I guess it was like a month ago. That wasn't too long oh, ago. He was? Yeah, he well, he was on Rogan, and he was I think he was kind of talking about like this that they you know they had this different headset they were announcing you know like later on this year, and like he was super excited about it. And that's kind of like this, like they're trying to figure out the mixed reality stuff and you know what they could do, and yeah, it's uh, been pretty crazy over there. So he says, um, yeah, they're finally selling hardware. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. Or does Facebook have I think didn't Facebook come out with like something similar to the Amazon like clock or whatever where you can do FaceTime? You know what I'm talking about? Not Amazon, but it was like it was like a clock that that like a tablet almost that you would put up in your room and you'd do Facebook Messenger to like call your family is what they advertise. Oh yeah, I don't remember. You know what I'm talking about? I I remember seeing a commercial. I don't remember if they were selling the app or if they made like actual the device. But yeah, I feel like I'm getting a little sidetracked. Um, yeah. So with the Met, dude, the MetaQuest Pro, fifteen hundred dollar virtual reality headset. Why is it worth that much? Well, I g- go and go a little more over the article. <laughs> maybe this is why you. Maybe not. <laughs> it says. It says. Uh, it says that Meta is touting that there's two major new features that you won't find in other headsets. The first is a set of inward facing cameras that track your eyes and face. They have several uses on top of anything outside developers might do with them. Um, They're supposed to let the Quest Pro detect whether it's fitted correctly, um, fitted correctly, and enable faux faux feeted faux fit. What is that that word, dude? Uh, faux feeted. Hold on, dude. Why? It's like you and I. I need need these people. Look, I I need these people not to be so smart. All right, (laughs) and use smaller words. Okay. Hold on. Mike I and I are math. We're we're very very uh math focused. All right. <laughs> Super math focused. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, so faux it cuts feeded. down. Yeah, faux feeded. Faux okay. feeded. Faux feeded. Yeah, right you pronounce it right. right. Okay. I don't know so what that right. means. I was gonna say faux vetted. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say before. Um. Anyways, it has rendering that cuts down on processing requirements. Um. By only rendering fine detail where your eyes are pointed. Um. Ah. They okay. also power facial expressions on Meta's avatars, which will be able to smile, wink, and raise an eyebrow when you do. I mean, mm. very detailed, you know. Um, 
kind of reminds me of how like people in the metaverse are trying to like buy and sell crypto real estate and they have their own avatars running around in these different areas and that's exactly what they're trying to do metaverse right? it's all for that you know it's all kind of crazy anyways they're gonna turn facebook into a, a vr chat room <laughs> i mean and they probably are honestly um it says the second feature is a full color pass through video a midway step between vr and holographic augmented reality Quest Pro uses high-resolution outward-facing cameras to capture images of the world and render them inside the headset, uh, which can then place virtual objects in the room with you. That means you could do something like pin a virtual picture on your real wall or use a set of virtual screens while still seeing the world around you. Very interesting. Very crazy. See, that's like, whoa, dude. Okay. That's so right. meta, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. I get it. But is it, is it $1,100 more? I don't know. <laughs> yeah i don't know I don't either know. i the technology is so new who knows yeah, how it good is. it is it's early yeah. adopter territory so um who knows it does man sound cool though it does sound really cool yeah yeah it's aimed at business professionals i don't know i mean i i guess they're, like if you're like if you're doing like real estate or something maybe you could find some like cool use for it but oh um, yeah 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 for sure um is it, you, you want the spec list for the quest pro mic I want to know what kind of specs things pack I, I see. Yeah, I see a couple of good ones here, Ooh, actually. So, Quest Pro uses Qualcomm's newly announced Snapdragon XR2 Plus, uh, which Meta claims delivers 50% more power than the Quest 2's XR2, and it's got 12 gigs of memory instead of 6. It comes with 256 gigs of storage, unlike the Quest 2. There's no option for a cheaper 128 gig model. It uses two LCD panels that give you 1800 by 1920 pixels per eye, um, that's about the same as the Quest 2 on paper, but Meta promises the panel design will give users 75% more contrast and 10% more pixels per degree of sight, among other benefits. You're actually not seeing all those pixels on the Quest 2, although it's not yet clear how different the Quest Pro design is, which I think, you know, soon enough we'll find out. Yeah. But yeah, dude, it's kind of crazy. Um, pretty decent specs. It, it doesn't seem like it's, I mean, the way they, at least on paper, it doesn't seem like a huge, huge upgrade from like a Quest 2, but... Who knows, man? They probably do some other software stuff to play tricks on you, so <laughs> Let's see. I think this is pretty cool. I mean, we've seen a lot of progress just in monitors and stuff like that. We covered a monitor, what, two, three episodes? The curved vertical, like, you can literally bend it. Yeah. It was a 4K <laughs> or yeah. 8K. It was like something nuts. So if they can just shrink that down to a headset, I mean, this could be pretty cool. Yeah. I don't think I would personally early adopt and buy it, but I'll tell you something. If I know somebody that has it, I'm gonna go try it. You know? Yeah, it for looks sure. so it looks so like ready player one. It really does. It's very like very it's futuristic. So, yeah, it's so futuristic. It's like a, it kind of a mixture between the PS5 or the PS yeah, the PS5's VR headset and like full get up, but also with like pretty intense goggles and stuff yeah it kind of reminds me of like hololens almost <laughs> remember, remember yeah. hololens <laughs> yeah but, um so Mine's... this is go ahead no i was just gonna say <clears throat> i was just gonna talk about the uh, motion controls because they apparently got an overhaul a little bit of an overhaul um, this is meta's old headset tracked his controllers with led rings around the top the new controllers are, st are studded with cameras that track motion just like a headset this makes them smaller and quite a bit less Quite a little bit less wired in. Weird looking. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> geez. Whew. All right, let me, I'm going to reread it again. You know what? I, I'm, I'm rereading this again. This makes them smaller and quite a bit less weird looking, which I feel like is a weird sentence. <laughs> but it like, is. To it's put not the best like this. sentence. Yeah. Like, I get they're trying to be more relatable, but it's like when you're reading this and you haven't. Yeah. Anyways, Meta has replaced the controller's AA batteries with built in batteries that charge on a dock along with the headset. Built-in batteries. I'll give a clap to that. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like, uh, I like, you know, I know Xbox always has done the battery, like, you know, yeah. Duracells, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I, I will say PlayStation, that built-in battery, I appreciate you. <laughs> I like, I personally like the cartridges where it's like built-in, but I can charge it so you can swap them. You don't have to swap oh, yeah. the whole controller. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, a replaceable like battery like that definitely yes. the move definitely the way to go yeah. um but yeah so you know there may be times where your controllers die 
gonna have to plug them in you can't use them you can't mm -hmm. could be frustrating who knows we'll see how uh battery life does but, but yeah um yeah that's a good point yeah overall i mean that is the that is the quest pro um again fifteen hundred dollars and it's available at the end of this month <laughs> so uh you got that I, kind I, of money it's there you know yeah we should revisit this uh and see what the reviews are i think yeah it's early adopter cool. product, so yeah. Curious. Yeah, the design's really cool. Um, it all just looks like really sleek, doesn't it? It's not like high demanding, like a lot of desk space, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's very compact, like, right? Like, like that's yeah, the image that you got right now on the screen right there. That's it, like charging. That's it mounted and charging. Yeah, it's pretty small. Along it looks small. Two, yeah. Um, and there's two little handle things. Yeah. Or joysticks, sorry, controllers. Yeah. Cause see, yeah, the thing about everything too is it's all like, it's all the, um, like the, yeah, the gold connectors. So you just set it down yeah, and charge this kind of thing. Just set it, which is yeah, nice. You set it down on the little platform and it just automatically charges. Yeah. Even the controllers are like that. So pretty nice. You don't got to plug anything in. You know, just set it down. Yeah. It's pretty cool. For it's sure. A lot, though. $1,400 is expensive, man. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a the... huge ask, especially for just I mean... an average consumer. That costs more than a thirty ninety right now. Yeah, I mean for real. I'm just saying. I, you know, I mean they say you know it's not meant for the average consumer. It's meant for businesses and stuff. So that's fair. Aimed at businesses and professionals, quote unquote. So we'll see. We'll see who actually gets it. But hmm. that is the Meta Quest Pro. We well, you know this is fitting. You know PlayStation. We have an article later on that dives a little more into the acquisition. And some more counterpoints Xbox is making towards Sony. But until we get to that, um, Spider Man <laughs> Miles Morales, um, Sony is losing one of their exclusives right now. Um, they're losing I mean, a lot, aren't they? It's not like they're losing the exclusive. I mean, they're still going to have the game, they're just losing the exclusivity. Yeah. So, Spider Man Miles Morales is coming to PC this November with DLSS 3 support, which I find very interesting. Um, Sony announced that it's, uh, it's once PlayStation exclusive. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales is coming to PC on November 18th, revealed on the PlayStation blog. Uh, the PC version will support NVIDIA's latest DLSS 3 technology to ensure the highest frame rates, but DLSS 2, DLAA, and NVIDIA Reflex will all be supported. I'd like to read the whole article. Um, they did have a spec sheet here of like graphics presets and what kind of hardware um, you should rock if you want to get certain settings, like whether you want to get 4K at 60 uh, if you want 4K at 60 with ray tracing, um, which is just, that's wild. They're recommending like a 3080 with a 12700K, <laughs> like i7, and that's like high end, high end. Um, yeah, that's like brand new, like brand new, brand new. <laughs> <laughs> like for real. Um, 1440p at 60 or 4K at 30. You, they said you can get away with a 3070 and 11, and an i5 11600K. It's a little bit, little bit less, but. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, for me, 1080p 60, I got the specs, dude. Sign me up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got it all That's right. where I'm at, too. I, I mean, think I could get very high settings, 4K. But I don't, I, I don't think I've ever used ray tracing before. I, I find it, like, yeah. destroys my system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I still have a 1080Ti, so ray tracing, not in the cards. But I also, I don't know. I just, I, I'm still used to 1080 gaming. I mean, I think... If I were to get like new stuff eventually, like I'd probably want to go to like 1440p, but I don't know. I have I personally have no interest to in playing 4K games. It's just like me at the moment. Um my opinion may change, but I think right now like I'm fine with 1080 or even 1440. Yeah, for me, uh like right now I play 2K um res on like Forza Horizon. Yeah. I find that absolutely gorgeous. I kinda wanna see what it looks like in 4K, but I don't want to play 4k 30 frames per second you know yeah it's like if i'm gonna do that or, like i would just go get a 4k tv <laughs> yeah it, yeah it's like and then just hook something up i don't know watch it yeah i mean i think with the new cards i think i read somewhere with the new cards we're getting we're getting into the uh 240 hertz 4k monitor territory now yeah. which is like wild to me um they're so beefy yeah i can imagine um one more thing about this game I thought was really interesting. This is the game is fully optimized for ultra wide gaming. Uh, it supports 21 by 9, 32 by 9, alongside 48 by 9 for a triple monitor setup. It's pretty crazy. However, caveat, 
cinematics will only be available at 32 by 9. Um, it says, it says okay. cinematics will only be available at 32 by 9. However, the same as however the same as the original Super uh, Superman, the original Spider Man's PC version. So, um, very interesting. Cinematics aren't available at that triple monitor setup. But I mean, you know, 32 by 9, you're chilling. So, I, I feel like if you were to play that, it'd probably literally just like letterboxes if you're playing on like a yeah. That's what I was thinking. There. Yeah. Um, if you got a triple yeah. monitor set up or if your monitor is that wide. Geez, <laughs> I don't even think they make them that big. Bro, I know. It's Probably. like seeing the giant, like... I think I've seen some Twitch streamers that have a giant ultra-wide above their setup for, like, you know, OBS and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's wild. Yeah, it's wild. That's got to be a two-PC setup. For sure. Yeah. But are you, have you played Spider-Man Miles Morales? I have not. This is actually uh, the Spider-Man I've never gotten to. Mainly because it was oh, PS5, you're and I didn't even look into this, right? Yeah, I mean, it was on PS5. I didn't want to get it on PS4, but I mean, it's on PC. I can get them spicy frames. So, I mean, might be worth. Um, yeah, I'll definitely look into it. I think. But yeah, it's pretty. It's yeah. like it just it crept up because like I think for the longest time we heard Spider Man was coming out, and then that came out, and then they were like, yeah, Miles Morales is gonna follow shortly after that, and we're now is shortly yeah. after that, so <laughs> it's kind of crazy. How do you, how do you feel about this whole like? Because so you sent me a tweet earlier this week that I read um, about how like PlayStation and Sony keep taking L's because they're out here saying like oh we're gonna lose exclusivity with games like Call of Duty and we're worried that Xbox is gonna start doing exclusivity only options and cosmetics it's just like like you guys have been doing for the better part of ten years yeah (laughs) what are we talking about I mean yeah and people have been pointing that out on Twitter it's just like I don't know why they're like complaining about it now when you know th- yeah. this is like this is just this has been the nature of the industry for the past 20 years so <laughs> it's kind of crazy oh, sure. that they're just like all about it now and they keep coming out with more and more uh like so i guess we're we should really talk about this right so sony and playstation in general with their exclusivity they keep saying like all these games are exclusive to the playstation to like two three four five and stuff like that but these games are now coming out on PC. Yeah. Like, God of War is coming out on PC. That's a huge title that I thought would never leave PlayStation. Right. I view God of War like I used to view Halo. Like, Halo wouldn't be on anything but Xbox. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think most people would. I mean, this is a good segue to go into the next article, which is about, is about Xbox. Xbox is saying that PlayStation is too big to fail. And this was, like, response following the, uh, the UK. Um... UK's agency on the criticism of the deal of the Activision Blizzard deal. Um, essentially, I'm just going to, I guess, skip to the main kind of part, uh, or I guess <laughs> Xbox's response right now. Um, they said, in short, Sony is not vulnerable to a, um, to a hypothetical foreclosure strategy, and um, the referral decision incorrectly relies on self serving statements by Sony, which significantly exaggerate the importance of Call of Duty to it and neglect to account for Sony's clear ability to competitively respond. Uh, while Sony may not welcome increased competition, it has the ability to adapt and compete, which I think is a very important sentence. Um, gamers will ultimately benefit from this increased competition and choice, which I agree with. And I, I think Xbox, and, and, and again, just in short, before this, Sony was Sony is making claims that um, it's very egregious of Microsoft to like take the COD IP and then like like yeah, they they said they're going to give us support, but then like what are like but then when they once they have the rights, I mean they're obviously going to put it on. They're going to put it on xCloud, they're going to put it on Game Pass, and they, they don't want them to do that because they feel like it's just overall yeah. too big of an advantage. And so that was like the main argument. And then this is Microsoft's response to that. So, but I think Microsoft makes a solid point of like, I mean, it's if we get rid of COD, like, you're not going to die. <laughs> like, it's just it's yeah. only COD, you know? And they're willing to work with them, and granted, it's not, I mean, granted, they're not going to work with them for like as long as, you know, Sony has had COD, but rightfully so they're they're buying the ip (laughs) you know what i mean like it's just that's how competition works um but like this is like you know something like this like this is sony's opportunity to like really try and think outside of the box and create a competitor like some sort of shooter that could possibly compete i mean cod is a very big ip understandably yeah but like this is but again like microsoft saying i mean this is this is the opportunity for competition this is the opportunity for sony to really try and think outside of the box and make something that you know that we would have never expected and overall the consumer does benefit because like, it's increased competition and 
it's, it's just overall it could overall be a good thing if sony i guess what they're kind of trying to say is like if sony takes a better attitude about it <laughs> they could probably like find something better <laughs> which you know which that's, probably not the best way of wording funny. it but um but i mean i don't know i mean i kind of agree with microsoft here i mean it's a it, it is a huge acquisition like it is a huge thing that they get god but i mean it's not like sony cannot respond at all or has no way of responding to it yeah yeah, I think I think right now, um, and you know how I feel on like Sony and just their business strategy. I feel like they fell behind about four years ago, and they didn't realize it. Yeah, and it's it's too late for them to catch up. <laughs> Sorry, it's too late for them to catch up, and I feel like they really need to um, they need to figure out a different business model, man. Like, yeah. honestly, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like Xbox is. They don't care about selling consoles anymore. They only want to have this game pass. They want a subscription-based service where you get to play whatever games you want on whatever devices you want. They don't even care what you're playing on as long as you're using the game pass. Yeah. That's literally it. And then Microsoft or Sony over here is still trying to sell consoles. It's like, oh, people aren't going to buy the PlayStation if it's just going to be better and there's going to be more exclusivity on the Xbox. It's like, that's not what you should be thinking, man. You should be thinking, yeah. how can I keep people on the Sony umbrella? Not, how do I sell PlayStations? Like, you lost it. Yeah. I still think the strategy is to do uh, PlayStations built in to the TVs. Into Sony TVs. I still think yeah. that's the strategy. I said it before, <laughs> but here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. I said that, and Xbox listens to this podcast, so they went ahead and grabbed their Microsoft... <laughs> xbox game pass and integrated it with samsung tvs remember that yeah dude i think it, it was samsung right might have been can't remember I'm now like, i'm like 85 percent sure it's samsung but it's like the brand new ones 22 i mean they did it uh, dude they did it they, just, they like, got out so of sticks baby they <laughs> they need to figure it out um i don't know but i do like how they just clap back yeah <laughs> They're like listen if you can't deal with it <laughs> that ain't our problem <laughs> yeah i mean for real that's their attitude yeah um a little bit of a continuation it says the next paragraph is as far as cma's concerns about the streaming market microsoft says it has quote no advantage and says xbox feels it has a quote number of significant disadvantages in comparison to other competitors because of the relatively limited platform support for xbox cloud gaming uh, the company also says that adoption of video game streaming is relatively low and that undermining the market anyway would only long term have long term damaging effects on its own product um i think this kind of goes back to like ios like ios doesn't natively yeah. support cloud gaming you kind of have to there is a workaround but it's not like yeah. you don't have like an app in the store that's kind of like hey here you go and apple was very much against that and i remember that <laughs> it's like you know xbox was trying to get on everything they got native android support of course because you know it's android but yeah mm -hmm. ios was like nah because this involves a lot more litigation than just you know just put an app up because you have to worry about the games and the ratings and like it's yep. it's a whole thing and then like because you can do microtransactions in games so it's like that's a whole nother thing where everybody's just trying to make sure they get a cut yeah exactly um it, there was another there was another sentence in this that i thought was like whoa like when i read it I'm trying to find it because it was in relation to when um microsoft was responding to sony um and they essentially said uh like I'll, it essentially was summed up to like it, it almost like hinted that like sony had the opportunity to include game pass but of course they didn't kind of thing like it, it's not like we completely denied sony of game pass at any point <laughs> like if they wanted to work with this kind of thing they could i mean obviously sony would i don't think oh, sony yeah. would ever do that but like but it no was just funny it, it was just funny of like you know i mean if they came to us and asked we wouldn't say no kind of thing which i thought was hilarious um but yeah, that's that's mentioned as well. Yeah, what do you think? How, how do you feel uh, Sony is handling this? Um, it's very odd. I've seen a lot of things on Twitter. I saw one graphic on Twitter. The graphic didn't really. The graphic wasn't what I focused on because it was kind of like whatever. But like, some I, I saw someone tweet it and they were just like, like, and their opinion was, you know, in the long term, if Sony was to deny this acquisition from microsoft it's only going to damage the market in the long term which i get their perspective on because it's like you know if you i think it comes back to kind of what xbox is saying is like competition and innovation and all that it's like it 
kind of discourages that if you <laughs> if you like you get rid of it to a certain extent. But I mean, I mean, do because like do I think it would really like damage the market if they deny Microsoft of this? I mean, I, I'm not an analyst, so I I can't fully say, but it does seem a little like I don't think anything would like. I don't think it would really be like detrimental to gaming if <laughs> this didn't go through, kind of thing. It kind of just feel like Microsoft, unfortunately, has to take an L because you know Sony, Sony doesn't want to adapt. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, it's hard. It's hard to really say, right? Because Xbox is buying a pretty big chunk of the gaming space, but they're not making it exclusive, so they don't have like a monopoly over it, right? Yeah. It's like they're just getting a bigger piece of all the pie. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, I I just think all of this is just to get people on the Game Pass. It's like they want to be the digital version of Blockbuster. Where it's like the only place to go get DV... Actually, it was VHS back then and like N64 games back in the Stone Age. It's what you would do is just get a membership, go there, and pick it up for like a couple of days. And yeah. uh, I feel like they're just trying to do that with the Game Pass. And they probably don't really care what PlayStation does anymore. I think they're just trying to. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think Xbox is trying to like crush and destroy Sony. Yeah. And like put them out of business. But Sony is making it seem that way. Yeah. They they are making it seem that way. Yeah. I don't know. It's like everything rides on Call of Duty. It's like, ugh. I, I it ain't just, that good you know, of a game. That's what I'm saying. I, I just I just <laughs> like the. When I see Xbox now, I just like to think of Phil Spencer. That, that's just who I think of now. So it's like, Dude, you know, what, what a branding genius. And he's just someone that loves gaming. So I don't know, dude. They can take it as hostile, but at least from a consumer's perspective, it doesn't seem that way. I don't know what goes on my closed doors. I'm not, I'm not an Xbox employee, but I will say there's one like little, little side thing we should mention is. All these acquisitions, Xbox is doing them in kind of like a good faith of buying some somebody like Activision Blizzard and being like, okay, well, they're under distress. Their employees are really unhappy. There's like lawsuits going through and stuff like that. But they want to fix it to turn it into what like Blizzard used to be. And all these old publishers and developers to try to fix basically like the crunch, right? They want to start creating that's what phil spencer's words were is he yeah. loved the old ips and they all just died off and he wants to like bring them back and yeah. make them better so the, the the goal on all these acquisitions is to give them financial backing to do what they want to do so if yeah, that ultimately. doesn't happen then this is going to blow back on xbox big time yeah i think it's true i think i think it's true yeah, yeah i mean overall it's just wild but it's one of those things, after seeing this back and forth, like, who knows if it'll actually go through? Yeah. See, we'll see in the coming months, but it's, um, it's getting more and more, like, of a 50-50. <laughs> like, every time I see these articles, like, oh, it, maybe it won't go through kind of thing. Like, I don't know. Um, You never know with, like, how each individual government's taking it. Yeah, Just going through, like, all this litigation worldwide. Yeah. But Brazil's like, yeah, games. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yeah. just let it go through. But UK's let like, wait a minute. I mean, UK, also the regulatory uh, group that is making every single smartphone go to USB-C by 2024. So they're uh, they're really I'm trying to be... Con they, this is the thing is like UK is the most consumer friendly. I mean, they were the original people that pushed for consumer support whenever like Xbox Gold like renewed and people yeah. weren't aware. Like that was UK, so. Yeah, and they, they're like big on uh, the monetization stuff that was going on in FIFA games. They're like, you're gambling? Shut this down. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Straight up. It's like, yeah, gambling is legal over there, but it's like, uh, I think it's online gambling. But the way they were doing loot boxes and monetization, they were like, nah, nah, they ain't gonna fly. <laughs> yeah, you're targeting like, kids. Nah. <laughs> exactly. So, UK's on top of it. So if anyone's to stop it, it's gonna be the boys over there. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see in the coming months. I'll be interested to see what actually happens. I think either way, it's not gonna be I, don't, I like if if Microsoft, if Microsoft gets you know Activision Blizzard, there'll be some pretty good change there, especially if you're an Xbox person. There's a mm. lot to be a lot to garner from that acquisition. But yeah, I mean, if it doesn't go through, is what it is, you know. 
we won't be getting Overwatch on Game Pass. That kind of sucks, but whatever. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, that's well, it's matter. free to play. Yeah, yeah that's free true. I, I guess two is free to play, isn't it? So yeah. Yep. So there's not that. Well, I figure watch all games go to free to play after <laughs> Xbox goes out and buys everybody. Yeah, that'd be so funny. No need for Game Pass anymore. Yeah, for real. Do you need a new graphics card, Mike? Oh, you know I've been talking about it. Whether or not I need one is a different question. I would give I, the same I response. Want one. I yeah. I, I would give. One. I would definitely give the same response. You know. Yeah. Um Unfortunately, it's gonna be. I feel like it'd be kind of hard to. uh to see some of the I'm, benchmarks, but the benchmarks I'm are ready for the for benchmarks are ready for forty ninety founders edition cards. I've seen a couple too for like the Strix aftermarket cards. It's not too crazy of a difference, at least from what I've seen. Um, without like the DLSS and all that stuff. Anyways, um, I use Jay's two cents. Jay's two cents. His video is, is he always does a really quick, comprehensive like here are every game I tested it on. It's kind of tested against thirty nineties and like thirty ninety Strix. And, uh, he he also compared it with the uh, 6950 XT, um, which is it's crazy how I, I like I've been so out of the GPU loop. I had no idea how good NVIDIA GPUs are getting. <laughs> like they're they're, oh, they're like crazy. they're on board with like you know 3080s, 3070s, wild. So um, but yeah, I mean you could see pause here. I mean you could see just the just the the uh, 4K difference on like Cyberpunk on like you know on Ultra preset. Just on uh, just between the 3090 Ti and 3090, oh I mean, gosh. just the difference there is insane. Here, break um, it down for the uh, the listeners. Yeah, this. so so the 4090 FE um, on 4K ultra settings for Cyberpunk 2077, you're averaging 76 frames. Um, on the 3090 Ti, it's only 51, and then on the 3090, it's 47, and then on the 6950 XT from AMD, it's 45. So it's like. I mean, that's like a 25 frame increase from the uh, 3090 Ti. Pretty crazy, and that's just on Cyberpunk. Um, he goes through a lot of different games. He does it with uh, Ray Tracing on. Ray Tracing, it's so funny too, because like on 4K with Ray Tracing on Cyberpunk, um, the 4090 is only getting 43 frames. <laughs> like, yeah. on, which is Ray Tracing wild. destroys it. <laughs> yeah, like, ray, ray tra- like we're still kind of in the early stages of Ray Tracing, right? <laughs> Until we actually get like mm-hmm. higher frame rates on it. But, um, but I mean, on 1080p, I mean, 1080 gaming, I mean, we're talking on the 4090, it's 121 frames of ray tracing on versus 70 on the 3090 Ti. So, I mean, just <laughs> that's a huge, like, jump alone in today. So, I mean, this is with ray tracing and stuff. Forza, I know you we got, we got the Forza guy on the cast right now. So, what's <laughs> so, up? <laughs> so, Forza 5 Extreme Presets. I mean, dude, yeah, oh on the Extreme God. Preset, it's a huge jump. So, on 4K, we are talking. Um, the 3090 Ti was 91 frame average, and the 4090 is 155 frame average at 4K. Um, so I mean these are huge numbers. Um, 193 on 1080p and 132 um, on the 3090. I mean, yeah, these are Forza was one of the biggest jumps I think across most games. Um, you know, funny enough, the um the 6950, the the RX 6950 actually performs better than the 3090. And the uh, 3090 Ti <laughs> on this game, which I found to be interesting. It's so the biggest thing is how different like each game handles resources, and like it's really shown in these graphs. Yeah. But, um. But yeah, Gears Five. I mean, we're seeing we're seeing another like what is that forty five fifty frame increase across the 3090 Ti and a 4090 for 4K. So I mean, another another huge jump. I mean, yeah. The size of that card is really showing. Um, oddly enough, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, we see uh, it seems to be at 1440p and 1080. It hits a 201 frame cap <laughs> for FPS. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and all 4K. But 4K Ultra Preset, it's 185 frames in Guardians of the Galaxy on the 4090. And then 3090 Ti was 126. So that's like a 60, <laughs> 60 plus frame increase, um, which is pretty insane. And that's, you know, higher end stuff there. Um, ray tracing on. We can still see a uh, a pretty nice boost there too, about 30, 40 frames uh, across 4K. Um, and then, yeah, Borderlands 3. Saying uh, pretty cool numbers there. It's 142 at 4K on the 4090. And then everything yeah. else is pretty much averaging about 80, 80 like low 80s, high 80s. Um, but I mean, this is pretty huge. Hitman 3. 
it's such it's so funny because like Hitman 3, you can tell there's clear bottlenecks of the actual game engine because like it's in 1080p, it's actually performing worse than a lot of the other cards right now. And that's just because, you know, it's probably not optimized for it and they probably haven't like worked with the hardware yet. Yeah. So there's like there's clear like bottlenecks there in that game. Um it actually performs worse in um in some cases, except for 4K. 4K is blowing all the others out of the water, but pretty much every other res, it's like worse. Um, which I find interesting. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, another game where we're seeing a 80 to 90 frame increase in 4K compared to past cards on this new one. Um, it's literally almost double like across all of these games except for Hitman 3. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, mo most, yeah, most games. I mean, this is the thing. If, if you're trying to game in 4K and get very high frames, like this is like the, yeah. that's really the only reason to get the 4090. At least that's what I'm seeing through benchmarks, right? Like, and yeah. this isn't even with DLSS on. So, I mean, DLSS 3 is going to probably get even higher frames than this in most games. So, it's like, I mean, th that's really the only way I see this. It's like, if you really want an insane 4K setup, this is the 4090 is going to be for you kind of thing. But, I mean, yeah. if you're just 1080, 1440p, it may be worth just looking into like a 30 series because <laughs> for the most part, that's going to, you know, be check all the boxes really. And I think, like, I mean, Shadow of the Tomb Raider with ray tracing on, highest preset. I mean, at 10, if I was gaming at 1080p on like a 3090, I mean, that's still 167 frames. That's still insane with ray tracing. So, I mean, I'm... Yeah, that, I, that is nuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd be still looking into 30 series personally for me. Um, but it's not to say this technology isn't impressive and what, uh, what NVIDIA has done with the 40 series. It's uh, it's making the size of the card make a little more sense, I think, from <laughs> understanding these benchmarks. Um, but yeah, um, Jay goes on to talk about he has four cards in front of him on the desk that range from a, a 4090 to some of the old 3080s, 3090s, and kind of, he does like size comparisons and everything. It's very interesting. Um, he also did a separate video on the Strix card. I don't have that video now, but um, it seemed for the most part, at least for the time being, there wasn't insane frame jumps from, for like the, there wasn't insane frame jumps from, frame jumps, I don't know, I can't say that, from like the, um, <laughs> from the AIBs and, like, the higher overclocking. It didn't seem like it's that big of an advantage yet from what I saw, but um, certainly with uh, optimization, that's gonna... That gap will be a little uh, little higher whenever uh, they know how to optimize for it and utilize the extra voltage, but... Dude, this is wild stuff, man. What do you think, Mike, overall? Uh, I think... I think I wish I had a lot more money. <laughs> <laughs> Because the 4K, man, like, so basically where we're hidden is RTX 30 series was basically set up for you to do at least 60 frames per second at 4K resolution, right? For the most part, yeah. And this is basically, I mean, some of them can go up to 144, and some of them you were doing a 244, it looked like. Uh, yeah, I'm like, almost, like, it, you... Almost. It, it was close. No, this is the thing. It was to the point where if you had a 240 hertz monitor, you're taking advantage of the 40 to 50 extra frames you're getting on 4K. So it's worth yeah. getting at that point, right? Like you're seeing yeah. a difference. So it's like it's a fact. We're, we're in that territory now. It's crazy. I mean, I mean, yeah, we are, and we haven't even gotten the launch of the new Intel CPUs or all the AMD stuff yet, right? Yeah, I think I AMD's mean, just now starting to come out. So, yeah. I mean, this generation is going to be so expensive, but it's also probably going to be one of the biggest jumps. I think it's going to be a massive jump. I think. It's yeah, definitely I a bigger jump than I was expecting, put it that way. Yeah, I I, th I figured the 30 series and the 40 series would be pretty close. I didn't think it was going to be this big of a jump. I feel like the jump from the 20 to 30 series is smaller than the jump to 30 to 40 series. Yeah, and that was a big jump. Like, I remember... That was a huge the, jump. The 10 to 20 was kind of like, eh. Like, you know, eh. I mean, it was all right. I mean, there was a jump enough, to, I guess, to... But it was very... It seemed very incremental. But, like, 20 to yeah. 30 seemed like, well, okay, that's worth the extra money. Because, like, you're actually, like, getting a decent jump there. But then with this, it's another, like, they, be, I mean, they made the thing huge, and they gave enough, I mean, the thing puts out so much Just voltage, they had, to, they had to put a giant, like, heat sink on the thing that doesn't fit in most cases, just because it brings out so much power. But, like, so it's impressive. justified, because you're getting that performance for the size of the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just wild. Um, it's so true. It's so true. And there's, like, there's something weird going on. Uh, I saw... I need to catch up on my YouTube. I've been out. I've been out for a week. Yeah, so sure. I haven't got a chance to watch this either. So I'm pretty excited to see this uh, 
like all the breakdowns. But there is also like the cable adapter for the RTX 4090 cards are very weird. There's like a three prong adapter yeah. where it's like a three prong splitter going into one that connects directly into the GPU yeah. instead of having three ports. It's it looks so goofy, man. Dude. You know, it was funny too. Jay, like Jay was talking, I think he talks about it in this video, but like the adapter that comes with it. The, the port, I heard so, it's flimsy. Yeah, the port for the right. pin is like very flimsy, and it was so much to the point where he was recommending you pre bend the cable like before you put it in your case because it's like it's so long, it's going to hit the side of most cases. So, like, yeah. he recommends you just bend it beforehand just so you're not actually like bending the PCB too much because like that thing looks like it could snap. Jeez. Um, so yeah, that's I mean, that's I think for the most part, he was just recommending like. Just get one of the new power supplies, like one of the newer ones that come out, just because it'll yeah. support that and you won't have to worry about some huge adapter like this. But yeah, he said if you're going to use it, just pre-bend it. Because, yeah. <laughs> well, let me, let me ask you this, just side question. Um, you know how the PCB adapters are always like at the front of the card? Like yeah. you can actually see it in my, in my screens, like right there at the front. Yeah. Why, are they, why are they at the front? Why are they not at the back? You know... It's funny you ask that because there are some aftermarket manufacturers that move that port because I mean they yeah. it, because they realize like in most cases that's like a really like it's it's a very kind of like I don't want to say unintuitive but it's a very like just not it's just not a good spot for most like builds right to yeah, just it's have like it right not there. aesthetically pleasing either right yeah I mean I think there was so for some of the thirty series there were some manufacturers that put I think they put the port towards like the back of the card so like you could like yeah. thread it through. And it's a lot cleaner. You don't have a cable like hanging off. Um, yeah. And there's some that put it at the front. I mean, there, there are, there are certainly they have modified it. There are certain manufacturers that modify it to be more kind of you know cable friendly and just overall just a better thing to deal with. Because yeah, I, I think most. I mean, you saw the 30 series. I mean, the founders edition of the 30 series. It was like this weird kind of like side like edge out. So like yeah, you have the card and it would come out the side right here instead of like going down, which is yeah. kind of weird. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, no, like manufacturers, aftermarket like brands, they they think of stuff like that, and they have the ability to actually modify it on the board, so they do that in order to for the consumer to have a much better experience with that. Because yeah, it is a very very weird. Spot yeah, that makes it. sense. That makes sense. So I guess the the ultimate verdict are, is we were talking about going into like getting new GPUs, yeah. and is this forty ninety something that you? would rather get i mean the size requirement of it i mean we're really looking at like new motherboard and um, i mean we gotta do water block like custom water loop yeah because it's just not gonna fit it I just mean, won't yeah. fit in most cases most cases yeah look this is the thing if i had a little bit of money sure sign me up i'm getting three 4k monitors yeah. i'm going all in <laughs> i mean i mean right like right now i'm so like i'm so content with 1080p and like maybe 1440p yeah sure i wouldn't mind doing that um but I mean, 4K gaming, I'm just not looking to do that right now. That's definitely what this is geared towards, is high refresh rate 4K. Oh, yeah. That's just, I mean, honestly, if, if I were me right now, I'm probably just going like 30 series still, just, just so I can get either yeah. 1440p or just the highest frames possible at 1080, and I'm, I'm vibing until probably, you know, five or 6,000 series, you know? <laughs> like, That's true. Um, I've, I've seen uh, 3090 Ti's or 3090, I can't remember which one it was, Going for a thousand dollars at Best Buy, you can order those from online. So yeah. I know you got a Best Buy around you. Yeah, I mean, worth, I've worth been checking looking out. Yeah, I mean, I've been looking too. I think thirty. I've been seeing thirty seventies, thirty seventy Ti's on Amazon for like five six hundred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not too crazy. It's nothing, and it's yeah. way better than the ten eighty Ti I have now. So I mean, that's big enough of an upgrade. That like I would, I'd be that would be a huge upgrade from what I have, and it's good. And see here, so you see right now in the video, he's talking, Jay's talking about that, about how some manufacturers actually put it in different spots. Um, and I think he mentions, yeah, because he's like, he's like, you know, when you have it on the side, it kind of sticks out. It's not good. Um, there's some that put it at the front. Um, I, I can't remember if he actually shows. I don't know if he actually shows where the spot is on this particular card. There's but, um, definitely a video where he goes through it. Yeah, I, I saw See. it all in his thumbnail. <laughs> See, by the way, if you guys have, oh my it's gosh. insane. If by the way, if you guys haven't actually seen breakdowns of Jay's Two Cents, Gamers Nexus, or Linus Tech Tips, check them out. All three of those guys will do. Well, Linus is more like a corporation at this point. <laughs> but <laughs> if you if you really are interested in all this like 
high tech stuff or if you're like a novice man they really really like break it down and explain what stuff is yeah it's digestible uh, for someone who doesn't it is, yeah. look at like you know someone who doesn't watch pc videos all day um yeah so very uh always interesting yeah j2 says dude it's uh, dude i'm so happy for j2 because like he's been really popping off with like these videos lately and like because yeah, like man. like a lot of these videos have been doing so well and it's like and it's just interesting stuff it's like better than i've seen like most of these in the past too so man's doing it dude, dude. doing it dude i i don't even know like a 4090 car needs its own nickname it needs like <laughs> Because it's so big, right? Oh, the it's Goliath, so massive. dude. It's massive. Goliath, you think? Yeah, probably. I don't know, dude. That's Something very big. fitting. Andre the Giant? Dude, I don't know, man. <laughs> Andre the Giant? What are we, <laughs> wrestling WWE dude. style? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. I'll just, I mean, just... Like it, it, when you look at it like this, it's like, damn, it's not a big card. And then he, like, scales. You see something next to it, it's like, you oh, never mind. It, like, <laughs> it's so crazy. It's as big... It would basically be as big as this water bottle I have right here like yeah, that's not even a joke that, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. it's like okay let me just put it in <laughs> <laughs> for those just listening i'm putting the water bottle up to my case on my computer it's this like, is like there's no accurate way. representation there yeah this water bottle is 33.8 fluid ounces it's like <laughs> 20 oh, inches tall no yeah. it's absolutely wild. insane absolutely wild well Custom Waterloo, the, baby. Yeah, custom Waterloo. That's the way to go with this card. Probably gonna be the way to go for most builds. I mean, if you're doing if you're doing micro ATX, you're gonna have to almost. So yeah, I mean, yeah absolutely. <laughs> you don't have a choice. That's the way you gotta go. I don't know. That's all the articles I had this week, Mike. If I had to report. Well, I feel like I I I think this week was actually pretty good. I mean, I didn't see the the Meta Quest Pro coming out and being announced for fifteen hundred dollars. Jeez. And finally, the benchmarks for 4090 RTX is like yeah. so sick. Yeah, it's good to see so. that stuff. Um, all that stuff come out. That I think it was. I mean, it's either today or tomorrow. I think the cars are up for sale. It's like sometime the this 4090s? week. I think. Yeah, 4090s. Yeah. So yeah, they're. I remember them coming out. It was supposed to be mid October. I yeah. don't know why I th why I'm thinking the 17th. Yeah, is the 17th a Monday? Not sure. I wonder if he has it, it in the description of his video. Dang it, he, he doesn't. Does. Well, <laughs> really? <laughs> he doesn't have the release date. You know, I'm actually curious for the 4080, 4070s. I want to see what those are going to be like. Um, yeah, that are they going to be smaller? Been announced yet. Are they going to be smaller? Yeah. That's that's yeah. all you know. They got to be right. I mean, they if it, it, I mean, hey, if it's affordable and small, like, could you imagine if like the 4070 was like a five six hundred dollars? Like, dang, I might get a four series. I don't know, <laughs> especially if it's like a decent size. So, yeah, I think I think where I'm personally at right now is I might need to go. Get like I kind of want to go get the 30, 3090. 3090 is a solid do. car, dude. It's such a good car, but then I feel like this is the problem, right? Okay, so here's the battle that I always deal with. I think other people will too. If you get a graphics card that's too powerful for your CPU, then you're bottlenecking your CPU. You got to go get a new CPU, and then yeah. you want to get the newer CPU, and that CPU is going to be bottleneck I the, the GPU, yeah. and then you're just constantly going back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Because, like, you can never, you can, especially if your PC is really old, you can never build a PC, like, piecemeal, right? Like, you can't just go out and buy a la carte. Oh, I just want a GPU, because then you put that thing in, you realize how crap your other hardware is. <laughs> and so you're like, all right, exactly. well, I'm going to upgrade this, <laughs> I'm going to upgrade that. Oh. I don't know. Because, like, for me right now, like, if I, was, if I was to go the new Ryzen, I would have to get a new motherboard. Like, I was looking at motherboard yeah. prices, especially AM5 There's socket no motherboards. Joke. Bro, I'm not. I'm not doing that right now. I'm sorry. I like. I don't got a cut of money. <laughs> like, yeah. dude, I, I I'm balling like that. At least not right now. So, yeah, I'm I'm good. Like, I'm I'm you know new motherboard. I'll go like AM4. Get the last gen Ryzen because it's still a good chip. Yeah, that would probably be the move for me right now if I were to build. But we'll see how the next uh, few months. Uh, we'll see how the next you know little wild treats my PC and maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I will tell you, you your computer was choking for a while, and you finally cleaned yeah. it, right? It's been running better. I'm not going to answer oh, this you... question right now. <laughs> no, 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 this this question. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not answering this question right now. It's not. It's not happening. Oh no, listeners. I was listeners. thinking this weekend, maybe. <laughs> my chair's breaking. My man, my man here. Oh. About what a year and a half ago, you told me about how like your computer was just throttling during rendering, 
and you said it was getting overheated. I was like, oh, I, would, I wouldn't clean it. And you go, I haven't cleaned it. I you haven't cleaned that thing in like I wouldn't say a year bro. and a half, all right? I wouldn't say it that. Was, it was concerning because I think you even took a picture and showed it to me. Or am I imagining well, it? Well, let's say I, I haven't complained about it for a year and a half. Have I cleaned it in the last year and a half? I'll tell you, I feel last, like you don't complain think, to me because you know I'm going to say something. I think the last time I like truly cleaned the actual like CPU fans and like the fins. Well, no, maybe yeah. I did after that. I remember the last time I seriously cleaned it was like February 2020, right before pandemic. <laughs> so, I mean, I, may, I think I may have cleaned it a little bit after that, but, uh, but yeah. You just need one of these. You need, I, you know, I you think need we have one of those in the closet. I ain't going to lie. It's so. called dust and lint remover. Yeah. Ozone safe. I, I need to get another uh, three pack of those. Cause like, those are really nice. They're cheap. They're cheap too. But yeah. There gotta be a way to like refill it too, right? I don't want to keep buying the canisters. That's what I'm saying. I feel like it should be. Yeah. I don't know, dude. But, you know, maybe this weekend. I don't know. I'm a little busy, so we'll see. Well, it's, you it's can report on how you cleaned your uh your computer in next week's episode. All right. There you go. You hold me to it. I'll do it. I you know. I, I was actually. Might. I was thinking Sunday. I actually like seriously might have time Sunday, so probably going to. Cause like if I just clean it. It's gonna it's gonna perform obviously much better. So oh yeah, not that yeah, I have like easier. major issues cooling. right now, but yeah, at least with cooling, yeah. it's gonna be more efficient. So I really yeah, need I try to. to. I try to do mine every now and then, but I have like all these lint filters on it, so like inside it actually doesn't get dusty. Like yeah. very very rarely. Yeah. Like when I see dust, that's when I know it's bad. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. Let's see. Now we good. Yeah. My front panel. My front panel gets bad fast. Like that, my front panel dust collector, I actually do clean that kind of often because like that, that gets noted. Within a few months, there's like rings on it. It's that bad. So. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I have yeah, for to, mine, uh, it's... Yeah, for mine, it was like, it was more than that in my last place. I don't know why, actually. Maybe I'm just a dusty person. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I think I live in like... Place. I I think I live in like a landfill sometimes with the way like how dusty that front panel gets, yeah. but I don't know, dude, I'm chilling. I feel that. I ain't got I ain't got any issues with dust or anything that I know of, so not not visible to the human eye, you know. <laughs> it's a fact. Yeah. Well, um, as fascinating as I'm sure this is for the listeners, do you have anything else for us this week? <laughs> no, <laughs> I we, uh... it's PC cleaning time. That's all I got. So <laughs> that's fair enough. I'm gonna come back with actual like stories of me playing games. Honestly, I hope so. Like I, I just I just signed on Discord for the first time since like last week. I got <laughs> I got a, I got a DM that's just like. Hey, I'm playing Overwatch. What are you up to? Because <laughs> they get the note of it. They like see them online. <laughs> no. Oh, dude, that time. time. And it's about that time. Let's get back to gaming. Let's start. Let's start chilling. No more vacation. We're back, baby. Bye, man. Although the listeners don't know, bro. <laughs> the, t- you know, no interrupted programming. Oh man. So two weeks till Halloween, right? A little, little over yeah, two sir. weeks. But yeah, our our episode is gonna fall on the twenty eighth. So I don't know. Will I wear a costume on the 28th? I don't know. I ain't gonna make any promises. Could be kind of sick, I mean, though. <laughs> I got a costume I could wear. and I've actually worn it on stream before. I wore, I wore it with playing games with you, actually. <laughs> Do you, you remember it? I don't remember. <laughs> Where, dude? It's a, game, it's a game that Nick has been playing. Shout out Crazy Miller. Go check out his podcast. One of the two. Oh, my God. Uh, three, actually. You were, um, a, you were a pirate, dude? <laughs> I was the pirate, dude. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> oh dude uh, i have a costume, costume too purchase. i have a costume too i could probably break out i think we could make it happen be kind of sick okay. for the halloween episode i'm actually down for that let's do it all right let's do a all halloween right episode. all right dude mark it let's here make it happen. 28th 28th is gonna be the halloween episode halloween baby get, get hyped you know? all right let's let these people go yeah get out gonna, of thank here. you all the links everything that we've discussed in the descriptions below we even have timestamps for the people that are just Maybe they can't listen to the full episode. They got to come back later. They lose their place. We got that down there. We can help you. Also, check out Twitter. We're out on Twitter. You can join Discord. Let us know what's up. Hit it. Like and subscribe on the YouTube. We got people watching, not subscribing. Help us out. Does a lot for the channel. And without further ado, this is the M2 Podcast. I'm Michael Anthony. Kyle Heath. Thank you and see you next week. See you next week. Peace out, everyone. <laughs>